Yesterday, the Justice Department filed a civil lawsuit against Standard & Poor's Financial Services, as well as its parent company, McGraw-Hill, alleging that the credit, credit rating agency, S&P, engaged in a scheme to defraud investors in financial products known as residential mortgage-backed securities, or RMBS, and collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs. We allege that by knowingly issuing inflated credit reported ratings for CDOs, which misrepresented their credit worthiness and understated their risks, S&P misled investors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sounds kind of complicated, but we found the perfect person to uh, help put it in uh, layman's terms so we could all understand this is a very important deal here. There's been a settlement, and Carrie Sheffield, Forbes contributor and Competitive Enterprise Institute fellow, uh, is with us, and she wrote a great piece at uh, Forbes.com. Good to see you again. Good to see you. All right, so, so tell us exactly what this is all about. There's been a, a settlement in this case, and you say it's a, it's a chilling precedent against free speech. I do. I think it is. It's, it's Kafka-esque, really. Orwellian, I would say, um, what DOJ and Eric Holder have been doing. Uh, because they've been singling out Standard & Poor's, and Standard and & Poor's and other people have made the case that this uh, persecution of Standard & Poor's is in retaliation to the fact that S&P downgraded U.S. debt. You know, there are a lot of people who, you know, were wrong about mortgages and wrong about housing prices. And they're singling out S&P. Right. Why pick you know, on them? Why pick on them? And, and, you, uh, and you worked at the time of the, you worked for the com competitor to S&P. I did. When this, when this lawsuit came out, I was working for Moody's. And as I say in the piece, you know, I, we were relieved that it wasn't us. But who's to say it wouldn't be us next if we were to downgrade U.S. debt? Right. And so, for my op opinion, this is really an issue of free speech. It's about First Amendment you know, speaking out and, and um, you know, we know that the ratings were wrong, but we also know that everybody else was wrong, right, including right. Treasury, including the Fed, and including the other eight rating agencies. So this so was selective prosecution it is. based, as you feel, uh, as payback, a vendetta on the part of the Obama administration because by downgrading it, it harmed the, you know, the Obama uh, the legacy and, and outlook on the economy, correct? Exactly. And there's also, you know, S&P alleges that Timothy Geithner, Obama's guy, I remember him. Called, them, yeah. <laughs> called S&P after the downgrade and essentially threatened them. And so, you know, when you look at what's happening with the IRS targeting of conservatives, it, this would not be out of the realm of possibility that the administration would be punishing them for what they did. Uh, now, S and P, uh, they, they they settled, correct? They're they're in the process, in the process of wrapping of up. Yeah. Now, as opposed to going taking this to court and having you know someone like you or or, or someone with a like minded like you make your case that you're making here and say, wait a minute. Why are you picking on us? Why, everybody right. was wrong, and, and is this uh, we got a threat, and now the threat has come to fruition. Right. But they they don't want to go down that path, apparently. Right? Well, the, that falls on deaf ears. They did try to make that argument. But this has not been a protracted two-year process. But it would it be a, would it be a jury trial? Or, uh, how does that work? If yeah. They, well, yeah, I would have gone to trial. So, so I mean, they are going to settle. It looks like it's going to be about one point four billion dollars. Uh, S and P will Peanuts, not. Peanuts, right? <laughs> well, it's you know wiping out all their net profits for a year. So yeah, it, it's yeah. just, this is, in my opinion, as I said, I think it's chilling. It really sets a troubling precedent for anybody who crosses the uh, halls of power. Yeah, no, it, 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 and as you said, it, it, we, we've seen example after example with the IRS, and uh, we had an attorney general hearing uh, yesterday or the other day where she refused to say she would appoint a special prosecutor. So it's going to be more of the same old, same old. Right. Uh, we had um, the uh, the GDP come out today. It was a little uh, worse than the third quarter. Um, also, the Fed notes, uh, we were made aware, uh, their outlook uh, as far as raising rates. Uh, will it happen in July? Will it happen this year at all? What's your take on all that? Well, I think they're going to wait for at least six months. People thought maybe it could happen in Q1. Um, I think with oil prices being so volatile, I think they want to wait. Also with European Union doing their own version of QE, there's so many variables right now that I think they want to just hold it out. So. Well, you know, the market uh, did react, I guess, to uh, because they said the economy was looking good. And, and, and yeah, yeah, you know, it's so, as a layman looking in on this every day, every one, one little word, one little crossing out and changing the word from the last time they spoke, it, it, it just, right. uh, it, it, everybody panics yes. and goes crazy. She sneezes or twitches her eyebrow <laughs> a certain way. Yeah, but, but this is very important. I, I urge everybody to go to um, Forbes.com and read S&P Settlements at Shilling Precedent Against Free Speech by uh, Carrie Sheffield. And we were debating, folks, just so you know, before we went on, uh, Competitive Enterprise Institute Fellow, should it be Fellowette 
for free for for, for females uh, fellows. I don't know. We had any strong feelings? On it? <laughs> no, no. I don't want to put you on the spot. All right, folks. Gary Sheffield, and we'll be back. Guess what's next? The closing bell report with News Next Deputy Financial Editor Rob Williams, and we'll have the ding, ding, ding. The whole close. Everybody will applaud, and we'll give you the numbers. Don't go away.